All right, let's get Mr. Jake's opinion on ReZero Season 3, Episode 7, Alice Subaru. Well, after watching that Asarata video, it's looking more and more like this is the biggest misdirection we've ever gotten. And Alice is supposed to simply represent different things about Subaru in different timelines if he could have gone down a different path, like maybe taking Roswell's word. What the hell is this picture right here, though? This is like Puck, but not Puck. Is this Pick? Let's get it. Are there two Subarus currently running around Pre-Stella? In this episode, we probably had one of the greatest speeches in anime history, even mm. surpassing the speech in Season 1 with okay. Ren, also known as the From Zero speech. Some people still, you know, are saying, uh, no, uh, Season, uh, sorry, Rem speech, way better in Subaru speech. Listen, I think both speeches were fantastic. All I can really do is, I mean, I could make a lot of people upset. And start saying, nope, this is better. Nope, this is better. But at the end of the day, I think both speeches are great. However, there's a big elephant in the room. And of course, I'm going... Also, this part, I think now confirms that, like... It, I was always focusing on this neck of Al, of why it's all ring-like. The first thing I even said back when I first met Al, back in, like, Season uh, 1, Arc 3, was... Yo, is Al, like, kind of, like, half a... Uh, Land dragon? The land dragon also has, you know, skin that looks like this in their neck. Well, you can see his pale skin here, and then this neck just looks like some sort of cover, right? It's just something clothing that he's putting on, probably. However, there's a big elephant in the room, and of course, I'm going to be talking about it. Okay. And that is Al's similarity. To yeah. What's we up finally with that? got the first reveal of Aldebrand's eyes and on screen you can see Aldebrand's eyes is being edited so you can see it a bit better and you will notice that these eyes are the exact same as Subaru's yep. it's even got the Sampaku look which Subaru has it's got the cold hard you know edgy eyes we see that but is this just all misdirections rather than thinking Alice Subaru can we think of different ways how they could have similar eyes and so many similarities as if they're like Brothers from a different mother, what's going on? Which is a rare trait to have. So the question is, is Aldebrand Subaru? It could be. Maybe. Now something that many of you may have missed is right at the start of the episode, and you'll yeah. see it on screen now. Steering wheel? Behind Aldebrand, there's a valve. Now this- Yes, I believe that valve is the thing uh, that caused the flooding of Pristilla, for sure. And then the cult members probably attacked, or maybe they- you're, they were already there, and Al took them out, and then flooded the place, and picked up the media, and then called the melee. I think the timeline matches perfectly. This is really interesting. What does this valve open or close? Now, the reason why I'm pointing this out is because last episode, Regulus was complaining to Capella, stating that she shouldn't have opened the floodgate to mm -hmm. flood the city. Capella said that it wasn't her. Now, the reason why Regulus blamed Capella was because she was at Tower 1, and that's where the flooding originated from. Okay. Now, remember, in the previous episode, Amelia realized that Capella was located at Tower 1. Yes, and right across Regulus. Remember, right direct, that's what we're calling, because Regulus said, I'll threaten to kill you right here if I can. Guess who found the mirror at Tower 1? The communication Ow. Aldebrand. So Aldebrand is actually in Tower 1, right next to a valve, and no one knows who flooded the city. Gee, I so wonder could who. could it be that Aldebrand was actually responsible for flooding the city? Yes, at this point, I don't think we're reaching. I think it's pretty much that it can only be Al. Obviously, there's no confirmations, but everything that's been shown so far... And the one person that's been missing doing shady shit behind the scenes that also has incentives that lines up with ours. Remember, the flooding actually helped us. It's gotta be Al. It's implied, but it hasn't factually been stated. However, it is my prediction that if you've been following the breadcrumbs, Aldebrand is responsible for the flooding of the city. Can source material readers make predictions? Because, like... You know the source material. You know who flooded it. Y'all read the light novel. What do you mean prediction? <laughs> I don't know. It's just like, uh, why, why would someone make the wrong prediction as a source material reader? It, it's it's got to be kind of like, uh, they, they have to, the thing about like source material readers, and I'm sure the complaints they get is that they're 
hinting too much or they're trying to spoil or give, you know, things that ends up being spoilers, right? So, like, giving wrong predictions for fun, I guess, could be, I don't know, a little bit of a distraction, but, like, a prediction? Come on, bro. Let's see. So, is Aldebrand Subaru? Now, this is, of course, being a big theory. Subaru and Aldebrand have so many similarities, mm -hmm. okay? They have the same hair color, the same eye color, they have the same height, and there's other- Fuck it, Al is Kenichi, Subaru's dad. There are ways that they are similar, but I'm not gonna go into- Well, we can't really say dad, because he has different eyes from Subaru. The cold, mean eyes actually comes from mom. Kenichi does not have the same eye as Subaru, so I don't think we can really go with that. Uh, <laughs> long lost twin brother, how about that? There's a twin brother named Barusu. Oh, wouldn't that be crazy, huh? Wouldn't that be crazy that at birth they were separated and the twin brother is actually named Barusu. That's right. Ram's nickname that's been given to Subaru and it all comes together. Ram's stupid joke about Subaru's name said in a different way has now basically <laughs> hinted at... Al being Subaru's long lost twin brother. Yep, fuck it, why not? To that, due to spoiler reasons, especially if you're anime only, but maybe in the future I'll make a video about that. However, there's also several things. Aldebrand said that the Sin Archbishops, for example, don't care. Now, you'll remember that when Subaru was going to make the speech, Anastasia pointed out what happens if they get attacked. Yeah, what if they flood it? States, Actually, no, they won't attack because they're not the sort of people that would attack you for making a speech. Because they It's kind of crazy how we just took him for face. What if they did? Well, here's the thing. Why would they have left, you know, the media still on, right? Why? Because they don't care. That's how much confidence they have. So if you have that assumption and then you also have Al saying like, yeah, they're not going to flood it just because you give a speech. Yeah, it makes sense. But like, imagine... <laughs> As soon as the speech started or was almost like over, entire city got flooded. Oh my god. They simply don't care. And by the way, he's actually correct. And do you know why? Because Tape the author of ReZero has mm -hmm. literally confirmed it. So Aldebaran is I actually just don't care. on the same wavelength as Tape the author of ReZero. <laughs> it's almost as if Tape wrote the show. Mind blowing. I still wish that Subaru called out the Archbishops, insulted them. Had little declarations here and there. I made a final declaration to Regulus that he'll be taking Amelia back, but... Eh, would that have just made the situation worse, maybe? Maybe they would have gotten really pissed off and, you know, flooded the gates. Now, I'm sure most of you realize that the theme of this episode is not giving up and facing the future. Like this episode 18. This is what Subaru's speech is about. His idea that you might have some weaknesses, you might yeah. have flaws. But despite those flaws, you need to get up and keep marching forwards. Subaru's speech was about that, and you could see the dichotomy between... Rem speech. Sylphie, the blonde-haired wife, who was speaking to Emilia, she... Oh, she has a name? I thought it was 184 or 184. She gave up. She had hope, but then when Emilia returned, she lost her hope. And she said, look, I'm done. Don't rely on me. I'm not going to look towards hope again. Yet, in the same vein, Subaru's giving a speech about Holt, stating that even if you're not a fighter, to stand up and believe. The idea that you should not give up. Again, this goes back to Episode Season 18. 1, where Subaru and Rem had this conversation, where Rem said to Subaru, look, you're a loser, but you're someone that gets up and you have positive... <laughs> you're a loser, but... ...positive qualities. And then what Subaru did was he didn't run away, he actually fought. And then yeah. not only that, he killed Beetlejuice, and he killed the White Well, and he has all of these accomplishments. That's right. It's crazy how one beast can just turn someone around. It's all about the perception of self, thinking that he's a loser. And yeah, maybe there are loser sides of you. That's when he's at his lowest. But, you know, he's also been a hero before by saving Rem back in Arc 2. And then the whole notion of... You know, it's easy to give up. No, it's not. It's really hard to give up. No, it's not. Don't give up. This is not like you. You shouldn't give up. And now, you know, he's just fighting forward. This speech is essentially Subaru becoming the Ren 
Subaru is essentially yeah. Rem in this scene, giving a speech to the populace of Priestella. It's like the populace of Priestella are the Subarus, Subaru, the yeah. losers. The <laughs> every, time, every time he just calls them losers, there's something so funny about it. Because it's just fucking a bunch of civilians that got caught up in all this shit. But yes, they're a bunch of losers, bro. It's like the populace of Priestella are the Subarus, yeah. the losers, the, losers, the people bro. who have given up. Who are yeah. falling into despair. But now Subaru, because he's grown as a character, is now giving that from zero speech mm. to the populace. And he wins them over. Keep in mind, Ross' authority is in effect. So as the crowd gain that hope, their mood improves more and more and more. So I this speech was amazing and is up there when it comes to the From Zero speech, which happened in, of course, season one. I want him to say it was better, rather than saying it's up there. I want him to make a stance. Nah, it doesn't need to be made. Yeah, it was a good callback, right? Episode 18. And during the speech, it wasn't just Rem's part, but there was a lot of other things that was also picked up. There was like lines of, you know, keep your head up. I think that was with Krush. There was many different things also that I can't really think on the top of my head right now, but the speech, really was a combination of everything that he learned in the past seasons as he gives inspiration to other people. And it's cool that like before he was the receiver and now he's giving. And with this speech done, and if we do defeat Gluttony and save Pristella, right? Then maybe Rem coming back after the speech is done. I think that would be beautiful. Another important aspect of this speech is the idea of being in unison. This mm. is actually something Parts that Satella taught Subaru. The idea that you shouldn't actually try and do everything on your own. In this speech, Subaru talks about how not only is he going to help, but him and his allies are going to fight. Mm. So Subaru realizes that it's not just him. He has a squad behind him. He has Julius, he has Reinhardt, he has Garfield, yeah. he has Aldebrand, he has Priscilla, so on and so forth. Not only that, he brings up his achievements, his accomplishments. He defeated Beetlejuice. He defeated yes, the right. White Well. And this is... He should have also low-key said, I also took away the, uh, the Great Rabbit, but, you know, it's just in a different pocket dimension right now. Yeah, I think that, like, listing, you know, the different feats that you've done is really essential to prove that, like, you can do it. I expected some people to react to, like, oh, it's Subaru. Oh, it's Natsuki Subaru. It's, he's the one that did it. The legend that we've heard in the past about the heroics of, you know, the subjugation of the White Whale and then taking out Sloth, which is one of the most active cult members, would have been such a cool moment just to give, you know, Subaru more recognition and glaze. But, ah, uh, I guess that wasn't really the most important part about the speech. A turn, and it's even mentioned in the episode with Julius, where Julius mentions how Subaru made a fool of himself in the royal capital. He was a weakling, he didn't have any accomplishments. Back onto the topic of Aldebrand versus Subaru, you'll notice that there was an argument between them, where mm -hmm. Aldebrand just said to Subaru, it's give okay up, bro. to give up. Now, the reason why this is quite important is because they introduce a concept in the sub- Thank you, Josh, for that prime, man. Appreciate it, buddy. You can see it's called Heroic Delusion. That's right. I think uh, Asarat, that was really, uh, he put an emphasis on the term heroic reverie rather than delusion. However, if you read the web novel, you know that we sort of see this word written as heroic reverie. And that's the thing about ReZero, where words are so, so specific. Synonyms may, you know, portray the same meaning in many different shows, but a show like ReZero, it's very specific wording that matters. I remember the whole fucking, remember contract, vows, oath, yeah, covenant, and all that other shit. Like, they all have their own different meaning. Now, this is an important concept that will come up in the future. Mm. However, it's the different mentality that Aldebrand and Subaru have, considering that they're both very similar. One individual, Aldebrand, has sort of given up Yep. and only focuses on Priscilla. Whereas... It sounds like Al is that version of Subaru that took Roswell's advice to protect one thing and sacrifice everything. It's okay to give up too, right? I, I think that's uh, also Roswell's thing, but back in episode 18 when Subaru wanted to give up and just, you know, run off to Kararagi, right? Like this version, like I wonder what he's gone through. And I, I don't, we don't have to think Al is Subaru, but Al could symbolize everything that Subaru could have been, you know? 
there's also really weird, you know, uncanny things of character design and height, missing limbs, parallels, uh, the eyes, Garfield smelling something so similar about Al compared to Subaru. There's a lot of misdirections, I think, that could be real, but so far he just kind of symbolizes the Subaru that could have been if he gave up. And now he's here to... Maybe he means well, but it felt like he's trying to prevent the same shit happening to Subaru, but... We know that Subaru is different, and he has a power that allows him to be different. And will Al accept this ideology? I mean, if Subaru succeeds in, you know, uh, taking back Pristilla, I don't think Al can really say much other than, well, you got lucky this time, but your heroic reveries will lead to downfall of not just you, but so many more people in the future because you keep chasing this. That's just doomer as fuck, though. Right, that that's so hopeless and doomer and hypotheticals and if if this and if that, while well, one person is actually providing results and saving everybody. Subaru doesn't give up. As the episode played, Tape did in fact say, "If you leave it to Al, it will be fine," <laughs> which is mean? really strange considering this was something that Amelia was saying. But Amelia wasn't saying this for Aldebaran; was saying it. Subaru, Subaru yeah. saying, oh, I know Subaru's going to come save me. I know he's going to come. I don't know when, but I'm going to do everything in my power to help Subaru when he gets here. Yet Tape sort of parallels this <laughs> with Aldebaran, saying, if you leave it to Aldebaran, it'll be fine. Fucking troll. He's, he's probably having so much fun with this. I, I can already imagine him just giggling as he writes up this tweet and be like, oh, this is going to be numbers. Yep. All these people are so confused about the identity of Al. Yep, I'm gonna just feed them even more misinformation, maybe, or misdirection to make them think that they are the same person. But at the end of the day, I wonder exactly how they're going to explain all these different similarities and parallels that we see between both characters. So again, we have another parallel in the episode between yep. Aldebaran and Subaru. So it does seemingly sort of hint that Aldebaran and Subaru might even be the same person could be on the subject of Al is Subaru I do have a video of it so this video is three years old so it does need to be updated a tiny bit I don't think we'll be watching that due to spoilers and other stuff right but thank you for the recap analysis Mr. Jake here's the video please guys go give it a like here's the link and I'll see you guys next time